We all want to profit from our homesteads. Even if we're not running a business, even if we're not ever going to sell something, we want to get more from the homestead back than what we put in. Again, if you love it, if it's your hobby and it doesn't matter what it costs, you get so much from that hobby that it's worth every penny. And I think for a lot of us, that's the case. That's wonderful. It doesn't mean it's profitable. It just means uh, it's a great hobby that you know you should spend your free time doing because it makes you happy. And sure, you could say that's the ultimate game. But in the terms that we're looking at tonight, is it profitable dollars and cents wise? We've addressed the costs. What can we look to that even Accountant Mike would agree is something we can call profit? Because it's not just selling a product and making more money than what we spent on it. So I have a much smaller list here. Three things, three places we can look for profit. If you're taking notes, the first one is the direct products that these enterprises, these animals, these plants give us. That's amazing. Did you pull it up? Yeah, look at it. Is it ready to eat? I would go right there. That's delicious. Cool. So if you plant an apple tree, you get back an apple, that product is your profit. It is your gain. It's not money, but it has intrinsic value that arguably, depending on your place in life, would be worth more than the dollar figure you commonly see it at the store. So the, the products you're getting from your homestead, if your bacon is the best bacon, even in a blind taste test, if it is delicious, it's something you could maybe only find at a local farmer's market uh, and you could you know compare it to that local farmer's market price, uh, that product, what that worth is, and that's a good way to put some worth to it. Find something comparable and see what it actually would cost you to buy. Uh, we look at milk right now, right? So we have a grass-fed Jersey and we drink raw milk from a grass-fed Jersey. For those of you who know, Jerseys make amazing, sweet, rich milk. It is so delicious. And if you enjoy raw milk, a grass-fed Jersey, it's, it's just a wonderful product. So what is that worth? You might not compare that to a $4 or $3 per gallon a bulk tank you know, down at the shop and stop. Is it shop and stop? Stop and shop. I always get that wrong. Food and stuff. Food and stuffs. Uh, your beautiful raw milk you might value at a higher dollar figure than what you get at the supermarket, you know, just off the shelf from the bulk tank. You could value it to another dairy down the road who does raw milk from Jersey's. What do they charge? And that's how we always valued uh, back in Connecticut. We were buying raw milk from a Jersey herd that was eight bucks a gallon. And at the supermarket, we could buy, you know, two or three dollars a gallon, just your regular, you know, gallon of milk. We were valuing our product at that eight dollar figure. So it would cost us to replace it about eight dollars per gallon. Arguably, it probably costs us more than eight dollars per gallon to produce. But that's why we're doing this. We're trying to target and figure this all out. So what products are you getting? Is it lettuce? Is it eggs? Is it milk? Are you turning the milk into cheese? Those direct mm. products, that's one of your profits and that's the easy one to identify. Even if you're not selling it, it has worth, it has tangible worth, it has worth at the supermarket, and it has an intrinsic worth that food always has in a situation when you need it. But now there is some more ways we can find profit, but we do have to be careful when factoring these in. So the next one I put on the list is indirect products. And the reason I say we have to be careful about how we factor these in, uh, I feel like these are the ones that get listed by people as, you know, don't forget about this and don't forget about that. Uh, but they're not always as valuable as what we claim when trying to tout profitability. So you have a cow and she's producing milk and your family guzzles that milk. That has real value. Instantly, people are going to say, don't forget about the manure. That's black gold. OK, 
Counted Mike, do you think manure is black gold? Well, I think oil is frequently referred to as black gold. So, so I is think it that brown gold? Brown gold. I don't think that manure is brown gold because Why? I don't want it. You don't want it. I, I could say to you, hey, Accountant Mike, thanks for doing my quarter lease. I got a bag for you in the van. Oh, man, you're going to thank me. You're going to be so bad. You do my taxes. Brown gold, buddy. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> uh, it's terrible. It's terrible. Yeah, that, that doesn't have, I mean, it's terrible to me because I don't have any use for that. Use I for don't. It. I mean, who knows? Maybe in a year or two, if, if this container garden goes nuts, maybe I'll want it then. Right. I don't want it now. I can eat that chicken that you pay me with. I'll eat that thing tomorrow. Yes. That's got value to me. So that's where the indirect uh, indirect profitability, it is there in the form of manure. A lot of times you hear people talk about land management. I got this herd of goats and I let I can let them loose and they can eat all the weeds on my property and then I'll let the sheep loose and they'll eat all the grass. Okay, if you're doing that and it is saving you physical work, then it is a benefit. But if you have no use for that giant pile of manure and you list it on Craigslist and nobody's showing up to buy your brown gold, then it's really not something you can factor in as a profit. Because remember the definition of profit. It's a gain, and if you're not actually gaining something from that big pile of manure, if it's just an eyesore and a stink pile on your property, then you can't argue, you, believe, you know, you can't tell someone, no, I, I have a cow and I get everything from it, including brown gold. So it is there if you need it. If you're someone who likes to garden, yes. If you're someone who gets the manure back out on your field, yes. If, if that you use as some form of restoring nutrients back into your soil, yes. Then there's value, but only if you're using it. And I think a lot of beginner homesteaders get excited when they're told about these indirect products, but they don't actually take advantage of them. I don't mm. think if you have a bunch of chickens in a chicken coop and you don't have a garden, their poop, no matter how high in nitrogen, is doing nothing for you but stinking. So make sure you're going to use that, plan it in your system, or just don't count it as a profit. If you are in the planning stages, this is why I like the fact that we're talking about profit not necessarily monetary profit, right? Because this is something, when you're just getting started in something like this, you could absolutely consider, hey, I wasn't really going to do a garden because I don't think it necessarily makes sense. But what if I have this animal which is going to produce a bunch of manure for me? Does that change the profit equation on the garden? And maybe it will. Maybe being in this place can allow you to kind of uh, feed yourself a little bit like well okay hey that'll actually cut down on my real input costs for to grow tomatoes or something right which means it's easier for me to profit from tomatoes and it also makes this jersey cow make a little bit more sense for me i am not saying this should be a big driving force i don't think this should be a critical decision maker but definitely something that you could consider if you have the mindset of i'm trying to generate a profit, meaning I'm trying to get more out of this thing than I put into it. That is such a good point. Cows. Cows have a ton of indirect products and direct products, right? I have said it many times on this channel. I don't really like gardening. Mm. I don't really like digging manually in the dirt. I don't really enjoy it. And I get a lot of flack for that, but that's okay. Like I did, you know, you worked there alongside me in the ditches for years putting in septic systems. That is yep. not a hobby for me, digging in the ground. So if I were to say, well, we have these cows, so now I'm going to take this manure and I'm going to garden. I don't like gardening. So to say, let's use this brown gold now in a garden, and that way I'll be more profitable, it's not, it's not a good move. So don't use it to drive your decisions. Now, I love raising pigs. I love working with pigs. I love doing infrastructure for pigs. Cows who give an excess of milk, that can be fed to pigs. One of the first things, of, one of the farmers I bought one of my first pigs from told me uh, he raised Tamworth pigs, those red pigs. Some people claim they're the bacon pig. I think most pigs give delicious bacon. It doesn't matter the breed. <laughs> but that's just that's just my take on that. Um, he said, the, after he sold me a couple Tamworths, he said, next thing you're going to need is a dairy cow because you're going to spend a fortune feeding these pigs. 
But if you have some dairy cows out there in your field, bring them in and you get the milk, you feed the pigs. Milk-fed pork is delicious and it's going to save you some money. So that is something that I already like cows and I already like pigs. Maybe we go that direction instead of the garden because I know I don't like to garden. So to try to chase profit in an enterprise that I don't really enjoy that's where it's probably not a great decision. If it's something you'd like to do that you want to do and you can make with homesteading, you can usually find partnerships, then it's a great move. Third place to find profit. This is the one that's the obvious one, accountant Mike. Sales. Sell it for some money. Sell it for some money. Actual profit. Actual profit. Financial profit. Sorry, not actual. Financial profit. Dic uh, dictionary definition profit. Um, yeah, you grow a bunch of bacon, sell some of that bacon. Sell that bacon. And sell that bacon. Now that we have looked at all of our costs and we've uh -huh. identified all the other areas of profit, we're in a better place. What do we make sure when we're going to sell this? You want to make sure you sell it for a healthy profit margin, which means how much you have left after you sell this stuff, after you factor in all of your costs, how much did you make on a per unit basis? If it cost you $800 to raise a pig, you can't sell that pig for $800. It also probably doesn't make sense to sell that pig for $850. Probably doesn't make sense to sell it for $900. But there's going to be a point where like, okay, I don't know, a thousand, twelve hundred, something like that. Somewhere it's going to start making sense. You can use that as a good starting point to kind of gauge where you are in your market. Am I charging a reasonable price for the quality of the thing that I'm delivering? People don't buy stuff. People buy value. Are you actually delivering real value to them at this price point? If you are, great. And if you can't do it, that's okay. At least you know that like, selling it to make money is kind of out of the equation at that point so to make sure that uh you make enough back what do you generally tell someone who's running a business what do they want to see percentage wise in profit oh it all depends on the business um general i mean usually anything that makes less than like a 10 percent profit doesn't really seem to be worth your while most right? of our homesteads are you could you could look at them comparably to a business that's like a small mom and pop uh -huh. a lot of love in every product doing what you know labors of love a homestead everything's a labor of love it takes a ton of time and most of our homesteaders aren't going to have thousands to produce right they're going to be selling twos threes tens Sure. So is 10% enough? Should they be looking for more? What's a good idea for someone in that? And I know it's vague, but just someone more in the homestead world, what percentage should they shoot for? I mean, if we were running something purely as a business yeah. and we're doing this kind of a product-based business where we're gaining everything and we've got, you know, we've got to anticipate loss and all the stuff we've talked to, I would say I would shoot for something like a 15% profit margin, but reality, you're probably going to end up with a little bit less. You're probably going to be down closer towards a 10% sort of range or maybe even a touch less. That's if you're running this as a true business, right? Mm -hmm. Which I just said a moment ago, I kind of feel like a business that only produces a 10% profit margin doesn't really seem worth it to me. <laughs> that's, where, that's where I like your list of the three and we're talking about quote unquote profits. Like right. maybe... Homesteading and farming in general doesn't make a ton of financial sense. Does it make sense in other ways? Are you going to get a 10% profit and also feed your family with all this good quality stuff? That's a totally different scenario than trying to do this in order to like make a money and still live on the outside, you know? What about that X factor, right? You you don't really care if you're putting a bunch of money in your wallet. You just want to spend your time with your pigs. You want to be outside with your chickens. You love working in your garden. You, your life is more than the money we make, right? If that's how you handle your homestead, is it going to be profitable, Accountant Mike? Um, <laughs> probably not. Probably not. <laughs> 
And that's okay. Because playing golf isn't usually profitable either. Right? Right. Playing golf is fun if you're into golf. But if anybody owns a driving range, I'd like to know. I think that that's the way you could do it. If you liked that video, you're going to love the podcast episode that it was taken from. Click right here to subscribe to our podcast. Whether you have a iPhone, an Android, a computer you want to listen to, it doesn't matter. Just click here. It'll walk you through the steps to getting the podcast. You'll be able to listen to this entire episode. This little snippet is included in it, along with other snippets we've shared here on the channel. But you'll hear the whole conversation me and Accountant Mike had uh, in podcast form. Enjoy it as you're driving in your car. And I hope you run a real profitable homestead because of it.